Hi, today I will tell you how you publish successfully at Sigbovic. My name is Bernhard Ecker and Sigbovic is the one and only world leading conference. If you usually publish at venues like NeurIPS and CVPR or ECCV, um, this conference here nicely fits into your conference schedule and it nicely aligns with all those deadlines. The goals for this video is that you get to know some prior landmark Sigbovic papers. Those are, of course, all that have me as a co-author. You will locate a gap in that literature and you hopefully will exploit that gap with the goal to write and submit your own Sigbovic paper, will, which will be accepted at the conference. And of course, you should cite all my previous paper. And there is a hidden goal, namely we want to have FAU as number one innovator also at Sigbovic. So what is Sigbovic? Um, Sigbovic is a very nice um, conference. It has proceedings, as you can see here, it has a deadline. Um, so just like every other conference. And the first time I submitted to Sigbovic was actually during the pandemic. Here you can see my pandemic um, desk built out of a, a baby crib. And the first paper um, started with this abstract. We figured out why autonomous cars are still not deployed on our streets. This was a purely theoretical work. And during the pandemic, we basically realized that honking is an essential part of driving. Um, I was living in Boston during that time. And the moment um, the cars were gone from the seats, honking were gone. And then I realized, oh, yeah, that's it. Honking is what we need for autonomous cars. So no honk, no autonomous driving. And we pr presented various different systems in our paper. We presented honk fast. So we want to make the honk and autonomous driving really fast. Um, we implemented something called pre-honk. So um, just to make sure that if somebody honks at you, you honk before. Um, then we also implemented honk back. So basically, the appropriate reaction for any honk is always to honk back, whatever the reason for the honk was. And then you can also think about predicting if somebody else honks at you, so you can pre-honk back. And we then also figured out that there is quite some energy that gets lost, so we could recover that energy um, with honk energy recovery system. Um, of course, if you start to recover that energy, you could also make other cars honk and steal their energy from their battery. That's adversarial honking. And then, of course, it's getting pretty loud on the street, so you need some kind of active honk counseling system. Um, as stated in the paper, there are no limitations. This is actually not a joke. We took that sentence, we stole it um, from another paper. That's why we cited it, of course, appropriately. The really nice thing is that this work got quite some attention in the research community. Um, we had over 10,000 impressions on Twitter, and that's actually very hard to reach with a, with a real paper. Um, and this was also caused by um, Gary Marcus retweeting our paper, which is, of course, very fascinating. And of course, there is always this one guy who questions um, if your paper is actual real science. And here, for example, somebody said, like, what's level six autonomous driving? It only goes up to level five. But obviously, this person um, has no clue about autonomous driving. And this was also a piece where we actually did get an award. So let's um, have a listen at the award ceremony. Let's move on to the last award, um, which has a very special place in our hearts. It is the <laughs> award. And it goes to Bernhard Egger and Bax Siegel from MIT for <laughs> fast pre <laughs> back pre <laughs> back hers add <laughs> and AHC the missing keys for autonomous driving which you can find at page 266 in the proceedings. And this is, of course, the most valuable award in, in my Let's collection. Move on to the last award. So, of course, we didn't stop after that a year later, 2021. Um, we came up with a new idea, and this time it was not only Max Siegel who co-authored um, the honking paper, um, but also another fellow scientist, Kevin Smith, joined the team. 
And we thought like, okay, now we have the solution for autonomous driving. Driving now, let's make science better and easier for everyone. And we figured out one key limitation for a lot of scientists and it's um, error bars. So let's imagine you have a figure like this and then reviewer two says like, you should add error bars to that. Wouldn't it great if AI could do that? So we developed an AI that does exactly that. It adds error bars um, to figures. And it's a fully data-driven approach. So how could you do better error bars than error bars that are actually built on data? And so the paper overall looks like this, and it includes very nice results like what you can see here on the right. It not only works on scientific figures and adds error bars, but it also works on the Boston skyline. So you can easily show that actually the top of those buildings is not significantly different, which is a very interesting and new finding. <clears throat> um, so we showed various tests, um, we showed baselines and so on. And compared to the paper you have seen before with the honking, this is not purely a theoretic work. Here we really went on in all in. Um, we generated training data for our AI system. So we always had pairs of plots with error bars and without error bars. Um, to train our system. And you can already imagine that this got even more attention on Twitter. So we have 10% more views and we also got some um, very nice comments from leading scientists um, in, the, in the community. And yeah, that was not the only paper. So in that year, we went a little bit overboard. So there was also this other paper. This was a paper um, just by Kevin Smith and me. Um, and um, it's about unhelper functions. So you might know helper functions, but it's also really important to have functions that are not helpful. So for example, the first function you see here um, is just running a function. So you call a function and that function um, calls another function. Another algorithm that I um, like in particular is so-called professor coding. So you have an idea and um, you distribute it over your graduate students, you run it and um, either you come with a, they come up with a solution or you just run it again. So this is a very um, useful algorithm, of course. And then um, the problem is sometimes with related work. Um, so sometimes there is just no other work that solves the same problems, but you still have to write a related work section um, for the reviewers to make them happy. Um, so what we started is to just um, cite our own work in those related work sections, um, which of course also boosts um, the visibility of our previous work. Well, this was not particularly um, helpful for anyone, so it also didn't get quite some attention on Twitter. I still think it's a very, very nice paper, um, but as before, there are always haters. Like here, somebody says, like, this is really unhelpful, but I think that comment is also really unhelpful. The most successful paper in that hat trick we actually had um, in 2021 was actually this one. Action, a catchy title is all you need. And that's it. What you see here is the paper. It's brilliant. And um, we spent quite some time on the author contributions just to make sure that it's clear who contributed what um, for this paper. And it actually has kind of a serious background um, because scientists previously, previously claimed that having an acronym um, actually matters in terms of how many people can remember and will cite your paper. And this was also much more successful than any other previous Sigbovic paper on Twitter. And of course, we are very, very proud of that. But then I switched to FAU and at FAU I met this brilliant PhD student, Maximilian Weira. And um, I came up and told him, look, we have to write a Sigbovic paper and that will bring you closer to your goal to um, have a PhD. And the Sigbovic paper we wrote is the one um, that you see here and it got over 50,000 impressions on Twitter. That's brilliant. So what's behind that paper? What we did target is um, the problem of so-called Alkoenig cars. And the thing with those Alkoenig cars is that they have a pattern on them that should hide the shape of the cars. Those are prototypes. They're driving around here in Germany. I don't know if they drive around somewhere else in the world. Um, and the pattern should hide how the car looks like, what the shape of the car is. And of course, this is 
not the way how you should do it. The idea comes from old um, war stories um, where you basically put this dazzle camouflage pattern on ships and the goal was that you couldn't tell which ship it is. But the difference is here you have one view for the car. Usually you get multiple views um, from different photographers. So the moment you have multi-view, um, you can match those views. And that's exactly what we did. We took multiple views. We used the sandbox method. And what we get out is a 3D reconstruction. And also here, of course, Max didn't only tell that we can do that. He actually did it. And um, I bought the most expensive toy car of my life. And this toy car comes with such a camouflage pattern. And what you can see here is the actual mesh um, that we get as a reconstruction. And of course, you also need a comparison, like how would it look um, if that pattern wouldn't be there? And lucky us, you can buy the exact same toy car, even more expensive without that pattern. And that's exactly what we did. And if you look closely, you will see that the reconstruction is not nearly as bad. Now you could say like, well, that's a toy car, that's a lab setting. So let's go back to that news paper article and what we did here is we took those 25 images from that newspaper and ran the 3D reconstruction and we got a very exact um, shape um, out of those images. And here you can also see that Max really likes um, Greek letters um, in all different shapes and um, that will be very important for next year's or last year's Sigbo Week paper. Um, so this story was very great. I also used it in a science land. You can watch that one on, on YouTube. Um, so it's a very popular story and it, um, it was interesting to a lot of people. And last year um, we had the paper called From Zero to Hero, also of course written by Maximilian Weyre. And the very basic idea was um, that if the math in your paper is too simple, you will look stupid. So let's make it more complicated. And that's exactly what this paper does. So we start with simple equations. We have zero to hero, and then you get much more complex equations. And of course, that's also implemented. Um, so we took papers, um, papers that you might um, know from the literature. So one of them is called Keep It Simple. What a stupid name for a paper. It has to be complex. So what we did is we took all those papers um, and we made their equations more complicated um, to be more convincing. And just to show you what would have happened if people would actually have used our method in those papers, um, you could see, you see here on top how often they were actually cited. And on the bottom, you see how often they would have been cited if they would have used zero to hero. So if this is convincing to you, you just go to GitHub, you download our code and you run it on your tag file to improve your paper and convince more reviewers. So the facts, um, you can submit at Sigbovic either a paper or a review. Um, the review process is much more fair than in any machine learning, computer vision or computer science conference. It's triple blind. So this is a real benefit. Um, the additional blindness is that the authors, sorry, that the reviewers don't know what paper they review. That also speeds up the process because the reviews and the papers can be submitted simultaneously. Um, there is only one rule, you have to cite your own paper. So that's very important. Um, <clears throat> it's happening this year on 5th of April. I have no idea why last year it happened on 8th of April. And um, traditionally it should always happen on 1st of April. That's the whole deal about it. Um, one thing you shouldn't forget is to remove page numbers because what you submit will go into the proceedings. It will not be post-processed or anything. Um, I guess as long as it's not legal, it um, will get in. So don't blind it. No double blind, it's triple blind. So just put your name there. Um, since the reviewers will anyway not see the paper, right? You don't need to blind it. Um, if you forget to remove the page numbers, you get this nice batch that you see can see here on the top and right. And since it is such an influential conference, there are of course also printed proceedings that you can put to the most important books um, in your bookshelf. There is only one mistake you shouldn't do, like don't add a license to your paper. Um, because some pages in those proceedings are empty. And if you look closely, it's because someone added 
a non-commercial license and that printing service they use to print the proceedings is a commercial printing service and if you add a non-commercial license it can't be printed and that's the whole point of having a Sigbovic paper that you have the proceedings and you can actually read it. There is one very important thing that I left out and it's about authorship and affiliation. So in contrast to boring journals and boring conferences, you can also be creative when it comes to authorship and affiliations. There are not those limiting rules that the affiliations and authorship has to look boring. You can just do what you think is the right thing to do. And that's exactly what we did in all our papers um, for various different reasons. So let's go back to our learning goals. Um, we actually didn't reach much of them. It's now your job. You have to locate the gap in the Sigbovic literature yourself. You have to exploit it yourself. You have to write and submit a paper to Sigbovic. The deadline is actually on March 22nd currently, but it usually gets delayed several times. And of course, if you watch this video, you just cite all my paper. I mean, that's common sense, right? Um, and if you're from FAU, please contribute that FAU will be number one innovator at Sigbovic. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye.